welcome back to the shop everybody. The next step in my grinder setup project is going to be replacing the stock tool rests. Um, I don't think I've ever been in a woodworking or a metalworking shop or even seen one online or talked to somebody who hasn't modified their stock tool rest in some way. Um, I've seen just a piece of plate welded down that reaches around the wheel. I've seen the full on like Veritas style if you're a woodworker, the big Veritas ones. Well, I don't think I've ever seen one that's been left bone stock, ever. Um, so this is the, the setup that, that comes with the Bowdoor. It's basically got this vertical arm with the work surface on it, and then an adjustable arm down here across the bottom. Um, there's a couple things I don't like about this. The first one being um, the rest is, the actual work surface is small, and it doesn't wrap around the wheel. Um, secondly, if you want to move the wheel, you want to rotate the rest, the angle, you need a wrench to do it. And it's still kind of clunky, mainly because there, everything is a cast surface. No, so there you go, you can move it like that. And then to move it in and out, down here there are two more bolts that have to be loosened, which is even more of a pain. So. Let me show you what I'm going to do. So the first thing is, this bolt is going away for sure. Well, actually, all of this is going away, but let me demonstrate a concept. Um, if you're a woodworker, you might be familiar with a company called Tools for Working Wood. They sell battle or grinders set up for woodworking. And one of the simple things they do is they replace at least this one, and on the smaller, the six inch grinders, they, re they replace the bolts down here with adjustable handles, which makes, as you would expect, adjusting the rest much easier because it's just loosen it, rotate it to put it in the position you want, closer, different angle, and then lock it down. Um, the problem with that is you're, you're basically bound to be rotating around this point. You can't go forward and back. That's something I'm going to address in my design. So before I move the camera around and show you what I'm going to do, um, this is roughly what my rest is going to look like. So it's going to be fairly wide. I like a big wide rest. I like to be able to get the tool bit if I'm grinding a, a tool bit for the lathe anywhere I want it and have support. I know some guys like to do it freehand, way up here in the wheel. I don't. It's my personal preference. So I like a big rest. So that's roughly what the rest is going to look like. It won't be these exact dimensions. It'll probably be a little narrower. Corners will be rounded and stuff like that. But that's what the top surface will look like. So let me go over to the bench now and I'll show you what the rest of it's going to look like. These are the two components to the Baldor rest the arm that mounts to the side of the wheel housing and then the rest is just this L-shaped piece. So you saw the top of what my rest will look like um, and the side piece is going to look about like that. Not much different. Just going to be a piece of steel that comes down and the rest top of the rest will bolt into it. Not quite sure on the dimensions yet but it'll look something like that. Basically a, a U-shape that's flat across the top. Where my design is going to differ quite a bit is actually this bottom part. Mine's going to look like that. So what this is, it's still got the, the slot that the bolts go in so that you can move the entire arm forward and back. But I've incorporated another slot up top and what that's going to have in it is it's going to be like a T-slot. So on the other side of the rest, we'll use this for demonstration, there will be a, a little nut that can slide back and forth in the slot and it'll actually be an elongated nut. So that way when the T-handle's in there, if you want to adjust the rest forward or back slightly, you just loosen the handle and then the nut will slide freely in the slot, hopefully. Um, and that's really all there's to it. So this is the part I'm going to make today. I'm going to make two of these. They're going to be mirror images of each other. Um, I got some stock cut out, so I'll go over to the mill and get everything set up. Then I'll bring you guys back. Okay, I've got the um, two blanks. So just two pieces of flat bar set up in the, the mill. I'm getting ready to touch off. I've already done the bottom, cleaned that up a little bit. This is just a fly cutter with a right-handed, left-handed, left-handed turning tool in it. And it does a good job for this. 
tức Okay, now that I've got them sized to width, I need to size them to length. I'm going to do that by first cleaning up this end, then turning them around, and then taking everything else off the other end because one of these two bars was actually the end of the bar, so it's a little mangled up, but I gave hopefully enough extra to clean it up. mounted and I thought I'd show you how I'm going to cut these slots because I've got to cut a slot that's um, wider than a standard end mill so I'm going to have to make multiple passes and then I'm using a 3 8 inch end mill and this is half inch thick stock so I'm going to not make this all in one pass so I'm going to have to do a bunch of back and forth and since I don't have a DRO for this mill I've got dial indicators set up so these are just your standard um, hold downs, the, uh, the triangle parts, I can't remember what they're called off the top of my head, clamp down, square to the to the T-slots, the and then I have these dial, these dial indicators set up as stops. So right now this one's nine, five thousandths of an inch shy of this side, and when this one comes over and reads one revolution, I'll be at the end here. So I can go back and forth as many times as I want to clear this out, and then you can't see it, but over here on the left front of the mill, I have another one another dial indicator mounted so I can do forward and back to clean up at the sides of the, um, the slot. So I'll get started here. Maybe I'll take a pass or two with you guys sitting there. Might move you around. We'll see.
the way through now, so now I'm doing cleanup passes. I cleaned up the front side already, now I gotta clean up the back side. So I've got power feed set down real low, I'm gonna feed it across now. See the bottom slot here is finished. Now I got the top one on the left, the left arm. Not much different than the bottom slot. It's more the same. Plunge down, cross feed, plunge down again, cross feed the other direction, back and forth, back and forth. So I punch all the way through. The only thing that's going to be different about this one is that I'm going to come back. This is a three eighths inch end mill. Is I'll come back with a five eighths inch end mill to make the wider slot that the nut will actually fit in. Okay, so the through slot is done and now I've got to go in and cut the recess for the actual little nut, which is what I'm going to do now. I've got the, the 5 eighths of an inch two flute set up, all my dial indicators are correct, yes, yes. So now I just got to go down and make, I'm not actually sure how, how this is going to handle this, this weird kind of cut, um, but the total depth has got to be 375. 375 thousandths, I guess, 3 eighths. Um, so probably going to be a couple passes, but we'll see how it goes. slots exactly 5 eighths of an inch. So I have a minus zero plus five thousandths tolerance on this part that I designed. So what I'm going to do is, because I have my dial indicator set up, I'm actually, I can kind of treat it like a DRO and plunge down to depth. Um, and I left five thousandths on each end. I'm going to clean those up now. So I'll plunge down, go over to this end, clean it up, and I'll go plus a thousandth and a half that way, and then over, and then across, plus a half, thousandths and a half on this side, and then back across, so that'll give me my slot to depth, and then three thousandths wider than the nominal, which should be fine.
since it's only taking five thousandths off the bottom of the slot and one and a half off the sides, it's not working at all. It's barely making a noise. There, my indicator's picked up. Be the last seven gallons in this case. It's been a couple nights since I've been in the shop, thanks to Old Man Winter making it freezing out here. But tonight I'm going to finish off these arms. Um, what I have left to do is basically remove the bulk of material from the, the raw bar and then round over all the corners. Now, there's a couple ways you could do this, but in my opinion, one way is better than the other. I, the way that first comes to mind is, you know, just remove all this material real quick, rough it out, and then round over the corners. The problem with that is, you're going to have to flip the part over so that you can do the bottom corners. And then you've got this large section here you've got to try and clamp and deal with and make it get everything level. So the method that I'm going to do, and I'll probably do this off camera, is um, machine the radiuses on the bottom of the arms first, then rough out all of the material, and then go back and round over these three corners. So let me go over to the middle and get everything set up, and then I'll bring you guys back. I've gone and realigned both bars so they're nice and flush with each other. And I've also off camera marked some layout lines that I can rough to without having to worry too much. So we'll get started. I finished with the roughing mill. I've got it down to about 25 thousandths to go on the thickness of the bottom and the, the width over here. So I've switched over to a four fluid end mill, broke out the cutting oil, and I'm going to see what type of finish I can get on this. over the other corners and I'm down to this last corner and I've touched off already so all I gotta do is turn the machine on and get to work. deburr it and then I'll be ready to mount it on the grinder. So I've gone and deburred everything, took the wire wheel to the inside of the grooves here so they're nice and smooth, got a little, little round over on them so everything feels good to the hands. So this piece is done essentially and ready to be mounted. Um, there you can see the, can you guys see that? Yeah. There you can see the actual slot that the nut, which will be the next thing I'm going to make, will fit into. And then I didn't like, they just use regular, probably grade five bolts, maybe grade three for mounting these. Since I had grade eight, I upgraded to those. Well, I'm trying to keep 
get my head out of the camera's view. Let me see if I can where are these holes. There it is. There we go. So it has a complete range of motion from that far forward to that far back. So This is done, mounted, I'm happy with it. The next step is gonna, like, gonna be, like I said, to make the little um, T-slot nuts, for lack of a better term. <laughs>